Hello students, in the previous classes we have learned about different types of fibers that made the fabrics that are available in the market today and you learned the properties and also the consumer preferences. Now today let us see how to identify these fibers when they are there in the fabrics so that we can take care of the fabrics and also uh, we know how to actually utilize these fabrics for various end uses. A large variety of consumer goods are available in the market today and textiles is one of them and the labels are present on all textiles generally but sometimes the labels may not be there and also the information on the fiber which is used in this particular fabric may not be present. In that case when a consumer goes and buys the material because he likes it since the information is not there he does not have the you know capacity to analyze that particular fabric for the particular end use for which he has bought that material and also how to maintain this particular fabric. So, he will be at loss because he bought the fabric but he could not uh, uh, get anything he has invested on the particular material. Generally fabrics are labeled as per the legal requirement the manufacturer provides the information of the fiber content. When the fabrics are made into products such as apparel or home furnishing and the label may be present or it may not provide information on the fiber content. If the fabric fails to perform as per the end use requirement the consumer loses his investment on the product. Therefore, consumers uh, should uh, have knowledge about the properties of the fiber in the fabric so that he can compare its performance against the price range of fabric and also its intended end use. Now today the market is flooded with many counterfeit textiles that resemble the you know genuine fabrics but give very poor performance. The consumer will be confused to take care of these fabrics during laundering and so to address these problems it is advised that the consumers should build themselves with the knowledge of the fibers, properties of fibers and their processing. This helps to the consumer to easily identify the fiber content in the fabrics and also can take an intelligent decision about purchase of the fabric or its product. The knowledge of the fiber identification is also required for the wholesaler and also the retailer as they have to deal with customers and they are answerable for all the sale transactions. This knowledge may also be much useful to forensic scientists to deal with some criminal cases where the clothing of the victim will be a prime evidence. The Textile Fiber Product Identification Act of 1960s brought in by the federal government of USA has provided the classification and generic names to different fibers and instructed the manufacturers to provide information of the fiber content on label. As per the law it is mandatory also. The act also clarifies many issues related to the fiber products and their identification. Now let us see what are the types of tests that are present to identify the fibers. So the consumer will be at a greatest disadvantage when the composition of the fiber content in a fabric is not known or it is not given in the uh, label. He cannot go for laboratory analysis, but he can rely on certain non-technical tests to arrive at the fiber groups at least. Non-technical tests, in the absence of uh, special equipment and uh, facilities for identification of the fiber content in a fabric, one can rely on non-technical tests such as appearance, feeling test and burning test. These tests have limitations of their own but helpful to identify the fiber group and uh, also sometimes the fibers. The first test is the physical appearance test. In this you know the physical appearance of a fabric sometimes indicates the probable fiber content. Generally natural fibers can be identified tentatively. The yarns are drawn from the fabric separately warp wise and also weft wise. The parameters checked are the fiber length, the luster, the fabric surface and the fabric weight. The fibers are either staple or filamentous. Generally all natural fibers are staple except silk. However, 
spun yarns are made even from filament fibers by cutting and uh, spinning on the cotton system and so you will not know whether it is of a natural one or also the man made one. The luster of the fabric can be an indication of the fiber content such as silk, rayon, polyester or any other synthetic fiber. Cotton is dull but mustard cotton is little bright. Uh, silk has luster that is different from other fibers. Rayon has maximum luster, banana, linen and jute type of uh, natural fibers ho also have little luster as compared to cotton. Fabric surface may be smooth, soft or hard and in, in this case wool is soft to touch, bass fibers are hard to touch, all synthetic fibers are very uh, smooth to touch. The fabric heaviness can be tentatively checked in hand. If it is light in weight but looks voluminous, it may be wool. All natural and man-made cellulose fabrics are heavy. Linen fabrics are made little heavier than the other cellulose fabrics. All synthetics are generally light in weight. In coming to the feeling test, it is purely perception of the feeling of a fabric when it is handled. One acquires this expertise after handling many fabrics. To understand uh, this skilled perception, run your fingers over the fabric. When the fingers become warm, it may be a wool fabric or if the fingers become cool by losing heat, it may be one of the cellulosic fabrics such as cotton, linen, jute or even rayon which is a man-made cellulose as these fabrics are very good conductors of heat. One more example of this skilled perception is silk crepes and chiffons versus rayon or polyester crepes and chiffons. Silk is smooth to touch while others are hard to touch. But this test has a limitation of identifying the exact fiber content. Then we have another important test that is called burning test. Among the non-technical tests, burning tests may be reliable as it gives scope to identify the fiber groups used in daily user textiles. The fibers vary in their burning properties and that makes sense to utilize the test for identifying the fibers. The yarns in a fabric should be separated from the bob side and the weft side and they should be tested separately because we may have one fiber in the bob and another fiber in the weft in case of union fabrics. And so it is always better to take the burning characteristics of both the bob and weft yarns. And when you take the yarn near the flame, we have to do some observations. So what happens when you take the fiber near the flame, in the flame and after removing from the flame and how is the rate of burning and what is the odor that you are getting and also what type of uh, residue that you are getting. So these are the observations one have to make. When you take cotton fiber, you know cotton fiber is a cellulosic fiber and it is taken from the plants and so you find that when it is taken near the flame it ignites readily and also sometimes it scorches and uh, when you put it in the flame it takes up the flame readily and then it uh, also continues to burn after removing from the flame and it gives a afterglow and then uh, once the fire is put off and you find that the smell of a burning paper you will get and also the residue is going to be feathery light grey ash and it may be uh, light to grey in colour and sometimes if it gives you uh, black colour ash then it may be a moisturized fibre. If you take linen fibre and it does not shrink but it ignites upon contact and uh, it burns with the yellow flame and it continues to burn even after uh, removing from flame and the rate of burning is quick but it definitely slower than cotton and it gives a paper burnt smell again and uh, it gives feathery grey ash. Coming to the rayon which is also a cellulosic fibre and it but it is a man made fibre. It also does not shrink but it ignites upon contact. In flame it burns readily, it continues to burn even after removing from flame and the rate of burning is going to be very fast. It also gives paper burnt smell, it gives around light grey feathery ash. 
Then coming to the protein fibers like silk. Silk curls away from flame when you take it near the flame and it burns with difficulty within the flame and uh, once you remove from the flame it is self extinguishing and uh, the rate of burning is slow and it gives a burnt hair smell and also it leaves crushable black brittle bead. When you crush it, it will be crushed into ash. And another uh, protein fiber is the wool. This wool also it curls away from flame and uh, when you put it in the flame, it burns with difficulty and sometimes sputters and when you remove from the flame, it is self extinguishing and the rate of burning is very slow and uh, you get a strong burnt hair smell and uh, it leaves a crushable black brittle bleed and this also will be crushable and uh, so when you crush it, it becomes a black ash. Coming to this uh, synthetic fibers, polyester it fuses, melts and shrinks away from the flame when you put it near the flame. In the flame, it takes up fire readily but it continues to burn even after removing from the flame and the rate of uh, burning is uh, faster but it is little slower when compared to the cellulosic fibers and it gives aromatic smell and the most important thing here is the residue. This is it gives you know uncrushable bead and taking the nylon fiber when approaching flame it also melts away from flame, it shrinks and sometimes fuses and within the flame it takes up fire readily and once it is removed from the flame, it is self extinguishing just like the protein fibers. The rate of burning is going to be fast and it gives aromatic smell and again the bead is uncrushable one. So, this uncrushable bead is a, an indication that these are all synthetic fibers. And uh, the other synthetic fiber is the acrylic which looks like a wool. While approaching the flame, it melts and fuses away from flame and it takes up the fire readily in flame and uh, it continues to burn dropping the molten polymer of once you remove the fiber from the flame and the rate of burning is going to be fast and gives around acrid uh, smell and uh, it gives irregular hard black uncrushable bead. And we have lycra which is also used today in most of the fabrics, stretchable fabrics. When it approaches the flame, it fuses and is a, does not shrink away from flame and in flame it burns with melting and after removing from flame, it continues to burn with melting and it gives you know a chemical smell and the rate of burning is going to be moderate and it leaves a, a soft, sticky and gummy residue because it is a very soft material. Apparently, the burning properties of many fibers show similar characteristics which may confuse the consumer, but it provides preliminary examination and scope to eliminate some of the fiber groups. It gives a broad conclusion about the fiber groups present in the given fabric. So, now we will see what are the technical tests. So, when laboratory facilities are available, it is better to use them to confirm the fiber content. These techniques are much more reliable for the fiber identification than the non-technical tests. However, it requires knowledge and skill in handling analytical equipment and chemicals. So, we have the first test microscopic test. When the microscope is available in the laboratory, we can utilize this and uh, this is conducted to help to identify fibers with distinct features such as wool. Longitudinal view of the fibers show the surface characteristics of the fiber. The fiber is cut perpendicularly to get a thin cross section and when viewed under the microscope, it reveals the contour or shape of the fiber with its internal structure. Generally, an optical microscope with 100 x magnification is used to have clear picture of the fibers longitudinal as well as cross sectional view. 
a projection microscope can be preferred as the magnification is higher and the bigger screen facilitates tracing of the fiber shape. A polarizing microscope with a fiber lens provides good contrast and can be used for most specific observations such as extension bands in cotton fiber. To make a sample, few fibers are withdrawn from the yarn and placed on a slide in parallel fashion. To make a thin cross section, microtome is being used. The longitudinal view of the fiber and the cross sectional shape can certainly provide some useful information for identification of the fibers. The table portrayed here you know gives the microscopic view of the textile fibers. In case of cotton, when cotton is uh, viewed longitudinally and it is flat twisted ribbon like with uh, convolutions and uh, these are all tapered to one end of the fiber and the cross section is kidney shaped or a bean shaped. In case of linen, when viewed longitudinally it looks like bamboo cylindrical structure with defined cross marks and the cross section is polygonal shape and uh, it consists of ultimate cells that means that around 10 to 40 cells make an ultimate cell and it is going to be polygonal in shape. And silk fiber when viewed longitudinally it is cylindrical with uneven diameter throughout its length and show lumps, folds and cracks on the surface. And the cross sectional view of this show a wedge or triangular fiber and with a rounded uh, corners. Coming to the wool, when you see the longitudinally, you find that it is cylindrical in shape but with the overlapping rough cells called scales, these are all directed towards the tip of the fiber. In cross section, you find over or elliptical cross shape and uh, the fine fibers show a central hollow canal called medulla, but it may not be seen in all the fibers. In case of rayon, it is cylindrical with distinct longitudinal striations or the parallel lines, but the cross section is going to be serrated in shape. You take the acrylic fiber, it is rod like shape and having uniform diameter and some irregularly spade striations or parallel lines are seen in this and it is nearly round or bin shaped. In case of nylon, it has a rod like cylindrical structure with smooth surface, but delustered fiber may show a spitted appearance along the length of the fiber. And in case of uh, the cross section, we find it is round in shape and sometimes it may have even the spitted appearance if it is a delustered one. And polyester, it looks similar to nylon, it is rod like cylindrical structure with smooth surface, delustered fiber again show a spitted uh, or a peppery effect in, inside the uh, fiber. And the cross section is going to be round with again with a spitted appearance. And uh, actually some of the functional textiles you may find the round uh, shape of the fiber may be changed into a square or it may dumbbell or it may be triangular or it may be a different uh, shape depending upon the function it has supposed to perform uh, for the in the in the particular textile. And uh, the spandex or the lycra fiber uh, it is broad and often indistinct lengthwise striations are present and there are no cross markings on this particular uh, fiber. And uh, the cross section may be dog bone type or it may be a square. Coming to the chemical tests which are going to be very important tests for confirmation of these uh, textiles. So use of chemicals for identification or confirmation of the fiber content in fabrics is the ultimate technique without the use of much advanced techniques. In this we have a solubility test. The fibers are soluble in some of the acids or alkalis 
or organic solvents. By taking results of the burning test, microscopic tests, chemical tests can certainly provide useful information of the fiber. So, if we take cotton, cotton dissolves in cupra ammonium hydroxide and cupri ethylene diamine and linen fiber it dissolves in 75 percent sulfuric acid, but cotton is also also dissolves in 75 percent uh, sulfuric acid, but by other tests we can confirm the linen. If you take silk, silk dissolves in concentrated hydrochloric acid and also it dissolves in 10 percent of sodium hydroxide solution, but wool if you take it dissolves in only 10 percent sodium hydroxide solution, but it does not you know dissolve in hydrochloric acid, but when you dip uh, a paper in a lead state solution and uh, expose it to uh, dry wool fumes, then you find that the white lead state turns brown. This is another confirmation test to wool and rayon becomes slimy in fillings A and B and also it dissolves in most of this even in uh, uh, 69 percent of sulfuric acid and the acrylic fiber it dissolves in N N dimethyl formamide solution and nylon dissolves in phenol whereas polyester dissolves in metacrisol and the spandex lycra fiber it dissolves in dimethyl estamide or dimethyl formamide solutions. Then the density of the fiber is also an indicator of the fiber identification if a density gradient column is available with the consumer. Density is the mass per unit volume of a substance measured in grams per cubic centimeters. When you take uh, these uh, natural fibers and man made fibers, generally natural fibers such as cellulosics are more uh, having more weight when compared to other fibers. And when you take these uh, synthetic fibers, synthetic fibers are lighter uh, in weight. Cotton fiber is a heavy fiber and consisting of density 1.54 to 1.56. Linen has a density of 1.50 and silk has a density of 1.25 to 1.34 and wool has a density of 1.30 to 1.32 and rayon has a density of 1.50 to 1.53 and whereas acrylic has 1.16 to 1.18 and nylon has a density of 1.14 this is the lightest of all the uh, fibers that we use and polyester has a density of 1.23 to 1.38 and spandex or lycra fiber has a, a density of 1.20 to 1.25. So far we have taken an overview of the technical and non-technical tests for identification of the fibers. These methods can throw light if the fabric is made of 100 percent of one fiber. In case of blends where the yarn in a fabric is made out of two or more than two fibers, it is difficult to identify all fibers present in the fabric. Other advanced techniques used especially for detection of the fiber content in blends are you know optical and electron microscopy, infrared spectroscopy, UV visible spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, x-ray diffraction, thermal analysis. The quantitative analysis of the fiber blends depends mainly on eliminating one of the fibers by dissolving in a suitable solvent and finally estimate the content of the fiber left out. In case of tertiary blends that is having three fibers two fibers need to be eliminated by following the procedure twice. So, students today we have learned about the different techniques of uh, identification of fibers in the fabrics. This information is very much required to assess the end use performance of the fabrics and also their proper, proper maintenance in use.